Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to walk you through an updated FPS boost guide. I kind of made a video similar to this at the beginning of the season, but that was more for stuff like your colorblind mode and brightness. This one will only be about improving your frames. I'll be covering different window optimizations, registry tweaks, as well as some useful in-game settings you guys are not utilizing. Know that it's not edited on release. In all seriousness, these fixes are the only reason I still get 240 FPS. Now, before we start, I just want you guys to know all of the window stuff I'm going to cover is from my boy Adam X. Adam is a well-respected PC tweaker that has helped me with a ton of videos. He also single-handedly set up all the files, folders, and applications we're gonna use. Definitely go check him out below. So with all of that being said, I'll shut my fat head up and we can start with the FPS boost. To begin, we're gonna look at a few of the in-game settings I mentioned before we go on to the Windows stuff. The first one will be scrolling down on your game settings, aka the first settings tab, and enabling DirectX 12. As Epic explains, DX12 delivers better CPU performance performance and allows for the distribution of rendering jobs across multiple cores. They also say that DX11 is the default DirectX version, while DX12 and newer may offer a performance increase. The keyword there is it may. DX12 will not give every single PC an FPS boost. Some of you will just be better off with DX11. That's the weird thing about PCs. However, for those of you like me who have a higher end GPU, or for those of you with CPU bottlenecks, DirectX version 12 will help a lot. By the way, a CPU bottleneck is when your CPU cannot put out as much performance as your GPU can. Anyways, most people in pros I've asked said they don't use DX12 because they haven't tried it. They explain that other people have apparently gotten stutters from it, so they left it off. Well, I'm not sure how many of them or you guys know this, but DirectX version 12 was actually broken for a pretty long time. No joke, back in January of this year, or maybe December of last year, Epic straight up disabled DirectX 12. The weird thing about it though was that they left the option for it in game, meaning when you went into the game settings, it was still there and you could still select it. This led to a bunch of people thinking they were using DirectX 12 when they really weren't, and not really seeing any benefit. As of Chapter 2 Season 2, DirectX 12 has been re-enabled in-game. I currently use it myself with a 1070 Ti, and I actually get a big performance boost. My frames are way more consistent, my game feels way more smooth, and I get a lot less input delay. Input lag or input delay is a very contentious topic when it comes to DX12. The reason behind this is that DX12 prevents the use of exclusive full screen mode. That means even if you go into game and select full screen mode, you are not truly in it. You'll instead be windowed full screen because that's just the way DX12 works. But Charion, did you say full screen mode is way better than windowed full screen? Yes, yes I did little Timmy. Full screen mode will always get you less input delay. The thing is, you will get less input delay with DX12 and its fake full screen mode than you will with DX11 and real full screen mode. Techia yes City did a test on this which I'll link down below and found DX12 cuts out around 7 milliseconds of input delay on average. That's around a 25% improvement compared to DX11. Furthermore, because you'll get higher and more consistent frames on DX12, your input lag will be less by default. Just think about it. The more FPS you get, the less delay there is between each frame rendering, and the overall less input delay you will feel while playing. It's seriously that simple. To make sure your DirectX version is up to date, come down to GeForce Experience. It should look like this. Click on it. Once it opens up, go up to Drivers next to the Home button, and then make sure your GeForce Game Ready Driver is up to date. The last one was July 9th, it is currently August 2nd, so mine is up to date, but if yours is not, then click the big green button to install it. If you're really not sure, you can also press the check for updates button. Mine says you have the latest GeForce game ready driver. After that, come down to the Windows Cortana search and type Windows Update. Click on the check for updates system settings, and then check to see if you have any updates. I was updating some stuff and then I paused it for this video, but for those of you who need to update it, download and install it. Once you check and update those two things, you should be good to go. Moving on to the Atom X stuff, you want to come down to the link in the description and go to this page. This is where the Atom X file you're going to download is. Click the big green download button and it will install. As you can see on the bottom, it's technically a zip file, so you'll need either 7-zip or WinRAR to open it. This is what it looks like. You should see FN Season 3 Atom X FPS Boost Pack. I'm going to click on it and that will bring us to the five different tweaks we're going to do. We'll start with number one, Registry Optimization. Optimizations. We're going to skip the Fortnite priority folder because it doesn't do much. The optimizations one on the other hand does a lot. Click on that. All of these different things you're looking at are called registration entries and what they do is they go into your registry editor that looks like this and it changes certain values from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. It basically does all the hard work for you. Back to the folder, we're going to start with CPU optimization. Just click it. You'll have a little message pop up. Press yes. Then again for the second one, press ok. What this first 
Kotlin does is it changes your system responsiveness to zero, meaning your CPU is going to be way more responsive and fast. Next one is higher GPU priority for games. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Just click, press yes, OK, and your GPU will now prioritize games like Fortnite, helping them run better. Third one is not so self-explanatory. It's called Disable MMCSS, and I do not recommend everyone to disable it. If you click and disable it, you will actually get less FPS, but you will also get way less input delay. So if you feel like you get steady enough frames, but you want your game to feel more responsive, then you can disable it. While if you get bad FPS, I do not recommend disabling it. Also, Adam added a re-enable MMCSS, so if you don't like that you disabled it, just click this and re-enable it. Second to last one is the biggest, and it is called Power Optimizations. Click on it, press yes, okay, and that basically goes into your power settings and optimizes it for you. You do not need to go into your advanced power settings like I've showed. Adam literally changes all these values to the best one, and you do not have to do anything other than restart your PC. The final registry optimization is this one called Disable Anti-Malware Service Executable. It is technically a folder, so click on the folder, and you can see the registration entry is right here. What you're doing by disabling it is turning off the real-time protection, which takes up a lot of RAM. Anyone who has a lower-end PC, you definitely want to disable it, because that will definitely improve your FPS. You can check if you actually disabled the anti-malware by coming down here, right-clicking, going to Task Manager, and then checking to see if it is there. I have not restarted my PC, but you can see it's towards the top because it takes up a lot of RAM. Once you do it correctly though, it should never appear again. Lastly, if you want to re-enable it, just click this button, press yes, okay, it's re-enabled. And if it does not work after you restart your PC, come to this folder and read this. Adam put directions for pretty much all of them, so definitely read them. He also put different applications and command files. Just make sure you read and follow his instructions carefully if it does not work. After that, come back out and go to the second folder that is called Unpark CPU Cores and MSI Mode. Click on that, go to the Park Control folder, and then depending on whether your system is 32-bit or 64-bit, run the .exe. If you're not sure which one your PC is, come down to the Windows Cortana search on your desktop, type in System, go to System Control Panel, and go down to System Type. Mine is 64-bit, so I'm going to download that one. 64-bit's right here, I'm going to click it, Installer, English, License Agreement, I agree. Leave all of them, press next, install. From there you should see the park control application. It looks like this. All you want to do is go over here, disable all of these, and make sure that they're all at 100%. What this will do is unpark your CPU, meaning you'll utilize more CPU cores, thus improving your FPS. Finally, hit apply. New settings have been applied, okay. Then you're good to X out of it. We're going to skip MSI mode, which was in the second folder, and we're going to move on to the third folder. This one is named Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. Go Go to the top where it says commands.txt, open it up, and then copy all of these different commands. They basically explain what they do. This one is going to delete the value for the use platform clock. This one is going to disable your dynamic tick, and this one is going to enhance your TSC policy. With all of these copied, come down to your Windows logo, right click on it, and look for Windows PowerShell or Command Prompt with the admin next to it. Whichever one you see with the admin, click on that, and finally paste it in using Control V or just right clicking and pasting it. After you enter them, you can X out and restart your PC. Following that up, come back to where we were and click on the intelligent standby list cleaner.exe file. If it does not pop up like it did not for me, come down to the right and you can see it running. Just click on this little arrow and then click on the icon for it. If any of these values are grayed out like mine are, you want to press the stop button and that will allow you to edit them. What exactly we're going to change is this one down here that says free memory is lower than and we're going to change it to half of our RAM values in megabytes. This value entirely depends on how much RAM you have. I have 16 gigabytes so I'm going to put in 8192. If you have 8 gigabytes put in 4096. 6 gigabytes put in 3072 and so on. I'll also leave a list of them down in the description. Once you're done, check the the first box right here. It should say start ICLSC minimized and auto start monitoring. You then want to change the ISLC polling rate to 10,000. This may seem odd because 10,000 milliseconds is a lot slower than 250, but the lower you put this value, the more work your CPU is going to do and therefore the less FPS you will get. That's why we're going to leave it at 10,000 which is the highest. Third to last step is to enable custom timer resolution, check the box, and put wanted timer resolution to 0.5. To finish, hit the start button and then hit the purge standby list button. This will change your current time resolution down to the value you selected. Just make sure you do not X out of it. You want to minimize it and run it in the background as you play.
display. If you do not, it will not have an effect. On to file number four, GPU settings. These are basically pictures of settings for each GPU. At the top, there's AMD. When I enlarge it, you could see all the different AMD settings you should select. Nvidia, you have the same exact thing. And we cannot forget about my Intel homies. These are the settings that you guys should use. In order to access them for Nvidia, you wanna right click on your desktop, go to Nvidia control panel, go up to the top where it says 3D settings and click on adjust image settings with preview. This will bring you to this page where you wanna select use the advanced 3D image settings. You do not want either of these two options. Check this one. After that, you can either click take me there or you can go back to the top left and click manage 3D settings. I'm not gonna explain them all, but I'll quickly go through them. Image sharpening should be off, disabled, ambient occlusion, off, angioscopic filtering, off, anti-aliasing, off, anything anti-aliasing, turn off. Then for the CUDA GPUs, select all, DSR factors, off, low latency mode, you could either have on or off. You just want to avoid the ultra setting. Ultra will severely reduce your FPS. Max frame rate, turn off. Multi frame sample day A, off. Rendering GPU, just select your GPU. Power management mode, prefer maximum performance. Preferred refresh rate, highest available. Shader cache, on. Text filtering, on. Text filtering, negative LOD bias, allow. Texture filtering quality, high performance. Trilinear optimization, on. Threaded optimization, turn off. Triple buffering, off. Vertical sync, off. And virtual reality pre rendered frames, one. If you change anything, make sure you press a apply and X out. Final tweak in the pack is the update directx.exe. Click on that, press I accept the agreement, do not install the Bing bar, uncheck that, and this will update your DirectX version. I already have the most up to date one, that's why I completed so fast and no installation is necessary. For some of you guys though, you will need to install it, so do that ASAP. Overall guys, that is my updated FPS boost guide for Season 3. All the credit for it goes to Adam X. he helped me a lot, he set up all the files, all the folders, all the downloads, he did everything. Please do me a favor and go check him out, he will make your game run like butter. On top of that, if you did enjoy the video or learn something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel down here, and to turn on post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jarian. I did not shout you guys out in the last one, so I apologize, just know I really do appreciate you guys even if I don't say it. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Otherwise, that's it from me and I will see you guys in the next one. Later!